been a slow uh, evolution in, in, in mine reclamation, a progress, uh, but is, there has simply been a sense uh, in the public that that need to be accelerated. What has occurred in the, in the 20s, there were voluntary efforts, 1920s, to reclaim land. Someone would decide that the spore ridges should be flattened down and that the acid mine water, say, which is so prevalent around many coal areas, uh, should be drained off and controlled properly other than just let run free. Uh, these voluntary efforts began to be formalized in state mine reclamation programs. The first formalization was uh, in West Virginia in 1939. Uh, I have looked at all of these programs and as a, as a researcher with the U.S. Geological Survey and traced the increasing complexity of the statutes, the rules, and the way it was enforced in the field. And you see this mine reclamation growing by step. It, 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 the mine reclamation of the states didn't go up in a smooth curve or any sort of a sweeping curve. Incrementally, a state would come along, West Virginia came along and did the first one, and then Shortly thereafter, uh, Indiana followed, I think it was 1941. Then Illinois followed, and Kentucky about the same time. When I looked at them before there was no OSN, there were about 28 states. And you found sort of a disjointed pattern. One state would uh, say they just had a recent version of the act, such as Texas, would have a very encompassing control, controlling the backfilling and grading, which is putting the material back in, you know controlling water resources, controlling uh, contamination of water resource supply, controlling drainage, uh, topsoiling requirements. But other states didn't have. So the, there was a public, very widespread public demand for uniform regulation, such to the extent that they could be made uniform. In the interest of equity among mining companies, why, for example, should someone in Alabama be able to get by with something when up in West Virginia they might have very severe standards? Why would a mining company be able to shop around? So it was in the interest of equity to mining companies. Additionally, it clearly is a matter of interstate commerce. Uh, coal comes across all sorts of lines. And thirdly, there were increasing environmental damages and in damages to land that had a great productive potential for water resources and for agriculture. So at one stroke after years of effort, Public Law 9587 was passed. Now we're in the midst of trying to implement it. And it's interesting that when I, prior to 9587, uh, when you talked with each of the states, uh, they would say their situations, that their situation was in effect unique, that they had particular hardships. But I looked at all the states, and there would be a state in the West, and I would say there are natural hardships in each state. They differ. The states in the West have a problem of incredibly arid climate. The states, West Virginia, Kentucky, Western Virginia, they have slopes that are far steeper than, Virginia, than say, Indiana. So Indiana has favorable climate and has favorable slopes for strip mining, but Indiana has the prime farmland problem, and Indiana does have some very delicate soils to mine. So every state had their own problem, and each state was trying to respond in its own way. This act tends to make that response more uniform and we think more equitable. Surface mining, particularly, is, is just like peeling off layers of the cake. It's like re taking a, a, a cake that's delicately constructed and separating it into the parts putting back the parts or else having a very valid reason why the, why the layers of the cake, the frosting, and all the goodies on top don't go back there. If you have a very good reason, then in the reconstruction you can do something else. I'll give you an example. A top layer, the frosting, is the vegetation. One of the old problems in the old days, and you've perhaps seen it in West Virginia, shove the trees down Windrow them down, it's called. Windrow is a nice word for shove. Shove the trees over the edge, and there they lie decomposing for decades. So that, remove the vegetation carefully, dispose of it uh, uh, by shredding or by some type of burial or by burning. Then take off the topsoil, save the topsoil. Our access, save the topsoil. Nothing, and research shows this, 
Nothing is an improvement over growth medium. Nothing improves over topsoil. Other things do almost as well, but not like topsoil. If the subsoil material, if you had a row crop before, if the subsoil material is essential to, to row crop, save that too. Save as much of the subsoil as you can. And segregate that material so that it doesn't just wash away, so that it is available to you when you finish your backfilling. Take out the backfill material, and then after you expose the coal, and any time you expose the coal, anyone familiar with mining knows, toxic materials such as sulfuric acid ma ma inducing materials always generate, tend to come with coal. So keep the toxic material from running off the site. And then as you get, after you take the coal out and remove it from the site, put the rock material back in in natural juxtaposition. Put the soil on top. If you've had toxic materials, get them sealed away with some clay layers and buried. Revegetate as soon as you can. Get a growth going back on it. And before you get released from your bond, the site approximates what was there before. Does not resemble it. The tree isn't put back. The slope isn't the same. You may not be doing necessarily the same land use on the site. Ultimately, the land use decision, post-bond decision, is up to you in the local and state units of government as they restrain the landowner, not up to us. We're not in the land use control business. But then the cake, the cake is back, and it's available again. I think that uh, is a crude coverage of the Federal Act. The Federal Act is not a complex act. In any given sect element of the Federal Act, that was being done somewhere on the ground, and generally in a lot of different areas. And I saw anything that was in the Federal Act, I have seen done in pre-law times, somewhere in the United States, and I would say I've seen all those activities uh, performed in the Midwest. Uh, 